One of the things Work Partners is truly excited about is over time we've learned that there are several injuries that we can manage even better in the field than we probably could if we take them out of their team and bring them to the clinic. So we've established a first aid kit and I'll open it up for you and there's, it's got three levels and I'm going to start with the bottom level first but first of all if you have to go into a clinic or an emergency room sometime the doctor will say well we can't talk to you work partners because we don't have a medical release form. Now if it's workers comp the HIPAA rules really don't apply but we, what we do have is the gentleman that's injured let's say it's John Doe he pulls out this piece of paper and he he writes that I, John Doe, request that work partners talk to the physician who is going to evaluate me. And that gets us in, in, in a dialogue with the doctors, explaining our protocol and how we want to protect the patient, but we also are concerned about the employer. Um, there's also a piece of paper on here that is on the letterhead of the company that OSHA says we should have the ability to have a contemporaneous examination. The only way we could think of doing that is have the doctor call us at the time of the exam. So there'll be a second piece of paper which we may request the patient say here, call work partners and talk to their physicians about what we're doing. That kind of is one of those special things that we as physician can offer you, the employer and the injured worker. Looking at the first aid kit, I'm gonna start at the bottom of it and just kind of work my way up. Um, and what, what we have are, are, a lot of things are just things that you would find in a first aid kit, ones that we look at, we hardly ever use, but I think this has some things that are unique to the injuries that we see. We have material to keep things sterile. Gloves, non-latex, so if somebody is allergic to latex, these are nitrile gloves, they're, they're fine with anybody that has a latex allergy. And we have some uh, non-perfumed soap that we have available so that we will find some soap and water, scrub the area up real well. If somebody has um, a muscle injury and you want to put some ice on it, or if you want to use ice and heat, we have various ice compre compresses as well as instant heat compresses. And these, as you all know, you, you, you break them up or shake them and they turn to either what you want, uh, instant heat or what they call instant ice. Also, a lot of our injuries are musculoskeletal, um, and it's important to do something. Let's say that somebody has what they think is a muscle pull. We have ice on it, but there's maybe something more that we can do that will push us over the edge so the next two days the pain has basically uh, obviated itself or, or is gone. We have people use Epsom salts, uh, and, and we would apply um, or put maybe a half a cup of Epsom salts into the container that is uh, supplied is, is a plastic bag. We mix that up and we might take a, a towel, dip it in there, pull that towel out and wrap it around the affected area. The Epsom salts has magnesium in it which draws out some of that inflammation and it makes other um, materials that we use work a little better. Let's say it is a muscle pull and you want to just apply some uh, cream that sort of relaxes those muscles. We have some Sombra cream, uh, which we think is very effective. It seems to uh, penetrate uh, at least a couple of inches into the muscles to help relax them. We also have ace wraps, uh, bandages, uh, uh, four inch, two inch, and uh, uh, six inch um, in, the, in the bottom shelf. On the second level, we have over-the-counter analgesics, we have Tylenol and Aleve. And if one takes two of each, we think that that is as effective as some of the lower strength narcotics. But you need to start taking it right away. And, and it's four tablets, upset your stomach maybe a little bit, so we have you take a little bit of food with it. Um, we have our, our band-aids to cover lacerations. And then if we have a laceration that I look, uh, or one of our doctors, excuse me, looks on the, the picture or the video, and we think it's amenable to steri-strips, uh, we have a uh, tincture of benzoin, which is something that's not applied to the laceration, but it's on either side of the laceration that makes the steri-strips stick. Uh, not permanently, but you almost think so. Underneath the tincture of benzoin, we have various industrial strength steri-strips made by 3M. There's various uh, sizes, 
eighth inch, quarter inch, and we have some half inch. And as we, as our physicians look at the laceration, we should be able to give you a good idea of what size would be most beneficial for that, for that injury. So now we're going to do a simulation of how to apply the steri strips. We have here is a typical laceration site. And so the first thing we want to do is be sure it's clean because there's dirt out there, there's grime, and there is some hair. So I, I take a uh, razor blade and I will get rid of some of the, the hair. And after I've done that, I again wash it thoroughly just to be sure we don't have any contents in there except the tissue. Once that's done, we kind of let it dry and then I take a, a tincture of benzoin swab. And because that burns getting into the skin and will prevent some healing, I always start away from the laceration and go towards, towards the cut itself on both sides. Now sometimes you'll notice you get these lacerations and they kind of, uh, they don't look, they got swollen and they don't look so good. So I, I take the, the gloves I'll have on, I'll squeeze it together and kind of get the fluid out of there. So now I, I want to be sure that's dry, so I'll blow it dry. Once it's nice and dry and sticky, and that tincture of benzene just makes things stick even better than, than what these would normally on the skin. So when I, when I close the laceration, I like to start either south to north, and the second one goes north to south. Oftentimes we'll do the middle one first, so I take the widest part of the, of the laceration in the middle, I tack that down, and I I tug it towards the ends towards each other and then put that one down. And then what I'll do is, because I went from there in my mind north to south, the next one will be south to north. So I put that there, I, I get it firmly held and then I, right over the laceration I tug it, put that down. And because this one's north to south, the end one again will be south to north. So we'll go from there, hold that one down, and you have to pull firmly, and that's that. And it will look great. Once you get it, once you get it steri stripped, it'll look great. But if you just cover it and it doesn't breathe, and it gets no oxygen, you'll take it off and you'll be horrified that it doesn't look good. It'll look like you've had your finger in water too long. So we apply some new skin over that, which lets the oxygen get into it and then we can also just observe it. We will cover that a second time, um, but when I, when I want to do a follow-up call, you'll just take the, uh, the gauze off and I can look right in there to see that we don't have an infection. And that's pretty much it. That's how you put on the steri strips. These usually will stay on place for five to seven days. We, uh, the work partners physicians will monitor that and you'll be pretty much amazed at the good results that you get. Sometimes we want to use a topical antibiotic uh, I don't like uh, some of them, but I do like this uh, uh, bacitracin ointment, uh, and, and we'll apply a little bit of, of that. We have some alcohol swabs in this uh, middle compartment, and that also is just to kind of keep areas clean. We have to be sure we get it clean. Once we get it clean, we're at liberty to start drawing things together, and, and I think you will be amazed like us that a lot of these lacerations can be brought together with steri strips and they look probably better than if you put uh, sutures in. Going to the top tray, we again have more uh, band-aids, more tape. We have uh, uh, tongue depressors just to kind of isolate some of the areas we're looking at. We also have um, electric cautery and, and everybody has either done it or seen somebody's uh, fingernail get hit and you look and there's a, a the fingernail starts to turn blue. Uh, a lot of times you'll try to take a, a paper clip, you'll heat it up and try to drill a little hole into the nail. Uh, it cools down too quickly and pretty soon you're pushing harder and causing more pain than not. What we have is a, a cautery that you just open, open the cautery up, pull off the protective top and it just hold it like a pen and you press on the button. This turns red hot and if you just touch it to the nail ever so slowly you can, f you can feel the nail giving way and once you get to the area where the blood is the blood will come out and, and most always people say pain is gone, feels great, then I can do a better exam with, on the video. This self sterilizes itself, it's a bright red, kills anything that might be on there 
bacteria wise and you can close it up put it back in the kit and it's useful for several several um, uh, applications I think we can all think of times where somebody's had so much pain in the middle of the night because of their finger that they had to go into the doctor this prevents that from happening also on the top uh, uh, shelf we have some DVDs. Uh, somebody hurts their shoulder, and I try to explain, you know, they, they, they do the initial stuff, they get better, but they still have some discomfort, and I want them to do some stretches. Rather than having me try to explain the stretches, there's a DVD that outlines what to look for. So rather than have one of our physicians try to explain what you do, you can go to this and just observe it, and then go to your corner or wherever you want to go and do the exercises. That will save a lot of time for everybody. I also should mention that this first aid kit is on our website, so you can look at it, look at its contents, and find out that if it does fit your needs. We think it will, and with our communication, there's a lot of injuries that we can handle in the field, um, as well as any other place you would go. And then we do have these phone numbers. If you forget exactly our number, it's always in the first aid kit. Call us with any injury. And this is the contents of our first aid kit. I think as you look at the materials, you'll find there are things that are very helpful to treating these injuries in the field. And if you do want more information, please refer to our website.